Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Hey, what's going on, Shaq Housers? How you doing? It's your boy, the one and only Shaq House here. Uh, now that the election is over, and screw the politics, let's get back to what we love, Marvel stuff. So to that end, I told you in my Gambit video that I was going to be doing a video on a character who's another person in a suit, just like Guardian from Alpha Flight. Who are we doing today? Japanese-American journalist, New Warriors member, Mikiko Musashi. Turbo. Yeah, she came out of the New Warriors from nowhere, and it wasn't until like 50 issues or so in where she finally gets an origin story about how she got the Torpedo's old armor. But who is the Torpedo? Who is Turbo? Check it out here. You about to be educated, son. Ha <laughs> ha! Mikiko Miki Musashi is a baseline human with no superhuman powers but the latest in a line of heroes who have worn the torpedo suit, a turbine-powered flying armor. But what is the armor exactly? The torpedo or turbo armor is a skin-tight bodysuit controlled by microcircuitry and cybernetically responsive to the wearer's thought waves. It enables the wearer to fly at 5,000 miles per hour via small, nuclear-powered jet turbine units attached to the unit's wrists and ankles. The wearer can maintain a top speed for up to six hours before the suit's power runs down. A wearer can use the suit's turbines to generate powerful gusts of high-speed wind, and a wide-angle wind blast covering a large area can reach up to 50 miles per hour within a range of up to 500 feet, while more concentrated, narrow-focus wind blasts can reach up to 100 miles per hour within a 200-foot range. If timed properly, the turbines can release a series of short, high-speed air blasts that strike with tremendous concussive force, a quote-unquote hyperblast. By applying a similar turbine setting while throwing a punch, the suit's wearer can deliver a powerful quote-unquote hyperpunch. A double hyperpunch strikes with force equivalent to blows from beings of class 100 superhuman strength. However, a user can moderate the force of a hyperpunch to avoid injuring their targets. By reversing the motion of the turbine fans, a user can create a powerful suction to draw objects toward them. They can also use the suit's turbines to create short-lived cyclones or water sprouts by accelerating and directing large masses of air in their immediate vicinity, but most users tend to avoid this tactic since the results can be unpredictable. The suit also possesses a self-cleaning function that removes inks or dyes automatically, and users can also reconfigure the armor's appearance at will, notably changing its overall color or the shape of its helmet and turbines, though the suit's functions seem to remain the same regardless of such superficial alterations. The armor augments its user's strength, enabling them superhuman strength. The suit constantly generates an invisible field that disperses most forms of energy directed against it, including lasers, microwaves, temporal energy, and various superhuman bioenergies. The suit can also absorb huge amounts of hard radiation and dissipate it harmlessly. If needs be, users can expand this radiation dissipation effect to protect others in their immediate vicinity. The suit's force field protects the wearer from the adverse effects of high-speed motion such as friction, and it processes oxygen to enable unhindered breathing during high-speed flight. While the suit is immune to most forms of energy attacks and seems to absorb high-speed impacts, it is sometimes vulnerable to physical penetration, notably by bladed weapons wielded with sufficient force. The armor is cybernetically controlled through its helmet and is almost impossible to remove unless its seals and locks are cybernetically disengaged by the wearer. The helmet contains a radio system and a tracking system able to trace specific energy signatures. The helmet's visor has telescopic sights and is charged with special energy enabling the wearer to identify dire rates no matter what form they take. Okay, here's the history of the torpedo armor. The torpedo suit was designed by Yugoslavian scientist Michael Stivet, who was working for his uncle, United States Senator Eugene Kligerstivet. 
Clegger was secretly in league with the Dire Raids, a hostile evolutionary offshoot of the extraterrestrial shapeshifters known as the Skrulls. The Dire Wraiths were hoping that a combination of human and Wraith technology would be a counter to their longtime foes, the Galadorian Space Knights. Though on paper intended for military usage, Clegger was actually a leader of the criminal organization known as the Corporation and was planning to use the suit to take over the United States. Angered by his uncle's betrayal, Michael had deliberately designed less powerful battle suits, the Rocketeer armors, to present to his uncle. When Clicker learned of the real torpedo suit, he planned to steal the suit's only existing plans. As the first torpedo, Michael was attempting to destroy the plans to prevent duplication, but was mistaken as a criminal by the crime-fighting vigilante Daredevil. During a battle, a building collapsed on Michael, fatally injuring him, and he was found by Brock Jones. Jones, who was born and raised in the Bronx and went to college on a football scholarship, later turned pro and joined the Dallas Cowboys, helping them win a Super Bowl by running a 55-yard touchdown on a broken ankle. Jones later became vice president of the Del Mar Insurance Company, where he knew that he was only hired because it would bring in lucrative clients, but enjoyed great financial success. Jones, he stumbled upon the battle and frantically dug the torpedo out of the rubble, and the torpedo explained to Jones the history of the suit. As Michael Stivek died, Jones felt a responsibility to don the armor and become the new torpedo, stopping Senator Stivek's plans. As the torpedo, Jones began a career as a part-time costumes crime fighter. He became an ally of the Galadorian space knight Rom, who was a hated enemy of the Dire Wraiths, who ultimately killed Jones during a battle when they overran his small town home in Clareton, West Virginia. However, the Dire Wraiths who killed Brock Jones were a mystically inclined faction. They were indifferent to technology and were unaware of the significance of the torpedo armor to them, and so they left it behind. With Jones dead and his immediate family in hiding, his belongings, including the torpedo armor, were packed up and sent to his cousin, Philip Jeffries, in Long Island, New York. Years later, Philip's son, Mike, who was a freshman engineering major at Long Island University, stumbled upon the armor while searching for a costume for his school's Halloween party. Giving it to his best friend, journalism major Mickey Musashi, she donned the helmet and the costume, and its activation was discovered by a group of scientists who'd worked in the lab that produced the torpedo armor. Donning the Rocketeer armor, they crashed the Halloween party, attacked Mickey, and attempted to steal the costume. But Mickey quickly learned how to use his suit and overpowered the Rocketeers. Unaware of the armor's origins, Mickey and Mike decided to take turns using it under the superhero alias Turbo. And while Mickey was a natural in mastering the suit's basic functions with ease, Mike's command of the suit was clumsy and far more limited. Okay, here are some fun facts about Turbo. A highly intelligent trained journalist, Mickey Musashi has a Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism. She is fluent in English, Spanish, and Japanese, and she is inventively resourceful in crisis situations. She has some experience in unarmed combat and extensive training in self-propelled aerobatics. She seems to have a natural aptitude for operating cybernetic control systems as well. Now the torpedo armor's efficiency is dependent on how well the wearer's brain patterns interact with the suit's technology. Also, the suit was designed to be used by female dire wraiths in their human forms, and their physiology can tap the suit's potential power more completely and more easily, and so humans cannot so far use it to its full potential. Apparently more compatible with the suit than its other human wearers, Mickey Musashi can tap into roughly half its potential power, while Brock Jones and Mike Jeffries reach only 30%. The armor also augments Mickey's strength, enabling her to lift up to 20 tons, far stronger than the other human operators of the armor. But worn by a female dire wraith, the armor is far more powerful and much more versatile, capable of shape-shifting, self-enlargement, energy manipulation, and the ability to interface with and control outside computer systems. Okay, here are some thoughts on the character. 
Miki Musashi was a journalism major at Long Island University, which is where she met and befriended Mike Jeffries. In her first use of the suit, she took to calling herself Torpedo Sue after a half-finished remark by one of the Rocketeers that she later drove away. It was Mike who wanted to be a hero, but he came off about it like an overly enthusiastic nerd, which he was. Mickey didn't even want to be a hero, but she liked using the suit to go to make transatlantic flights to Europe for shopping sprees. She got involved with the New Warriors when she stumbled upon a smuggling ring that they were trying to shut down, at which point she began going by the name Turbo, largely because of the costume's turbines. Though both her and Mike joined the New Warriors as reserve members to better learn to master the suit, it was Mickey who was always called upon for missions as she proved to be more capable. And though she shared the suit with Mike, how they got it was not revealed until near the end of the New Warriors' first volume, which retconned the torpedo's history. Also, to me, the torpedo seemed like a joke character because of his appearance and his concept. He felt more in the same vein as the 3D Man, as both characters appeared prominently in Marvel premiere back in the 1970s. Also, it's worth noting that Mickey Musashi is the longest serving hero to wear the torpedo armor. And she continued and redesigned the costume, though she turned the fans into gauntlets after Mike was killed by the Queen Dire Wraith, who was looking to reobtain the suit for her species. Though she is a superhero, she considers journalism her true calling, and while writing for the Los Angeles Times, she struck up a friendship with Phil Urich, who's Ben Urich's nephew and one of the many people to assume the Green Goblin identity. Together, and with funding from Hulk sidekick Rick Jones, they created Excelsior, just like Stan Lee. Excelsior was a support group for ex-superheroes who sometimes were active as superheroes. Mickey later changed the group's name to the Loners after the Civil War incident involving the New Warriors. As the Loners, she formed a relationship with ex-New Warrior Chris Powell, aka Darkhawk, which made Phil jealous enough to betray the group. She became group leader of the Loners before being inducted into the Avengers Academy. As for her costume, the torpedo outfit is turbine powered and has rotary motors on the forearms and legs. It's supposed to be the ultimate battle suit, but those fans just make it look silly. And though it's capable of much more, it's basically a battle suit powered by wind generation in Mickey's hands. She could generate her own tornadoes and hurricanes that will put Florida to shame. And also, Mickey Musashi, I'm sorry honey, but you got poor taste in men. And let me ask, why do Asian American women often prefer white men, especially white Jewish guys? I mean, Mickey Musashi, she's been with Chris Powell, Darkhawk, and Dalton Beck, who is the mercenary known as Firestrike. And given her suit's wind generating capabilities, I wonder how Mickey would fare against Windshear from Alpha Flight. Yeah, Windshear is a mutant whose very power is to manipulate and solidify air molecules. I don't know, that'd be an interesting matchup if the writers finally take their heads out of their asses and get creative, but that's just me. Okay, Shackhousers, that's what I got for you on Turbo and what I got for you this week. Next video, I'll be rehashing one of my old series again just for the hell of it. But until then, you have a good one, folks. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shack house. Yes! Yeah. <laughs>